Hi, welcome. This is the 22nd video I've done looking at how I set up external hardware, this time the Stream Deck, connecting it to Microsoft Flight Simulator, using axes and O's as the bridging software between the two. And this one will look at making what's called a steam gauge. It's a, a rotary gauge. Uh, this one will show the RPM, the revs of the propeller on my Cessna 172. So let's bring that in. I'll show you which gauge I'm talking about. It's here, this one here, it's actually the software version of it, but that's the one that I'm going to produce. And so obviously it goes from zero to 3000 RPM. And I've calculated that this, if we take that as a horizontal line, 180 degree line, this one here is 20 degrees and that one there is 20 degrees off. So it gives us a total range of 220 degrees right the way around. We need to know that figure because we need to do the calculations to work out how far around to move the pointer to get to the various sectors. This uh, sector here, the first one is 2100 RPM is when it enters the green. It's just very hard to get it going, hard, uh, you certainly can't max it out on the ground at, uh, at sea level. So I've tested it in flight and that's 2100 to 2500 is the uh, green sector and this one here is 2700 it starts to red line up to 3000 so they're the figures I've, I've had to work with and then I've had to draw the various elements and there are three elements to it firstly the background scale then the moving pointer and I don't know if you can see it in the middle there is a, a mask here it's not showing the center of the the pivot point for the arrow there's a, a mask here so that you can put text on it so they're the three elements i've had to draw and i'll do a video later on showing you how i constructed it but this is my first go at really doing graphics seriously uh, never really been into graphics software so i've learned how to do this during this week lots of youtube help and i think i've come up with something that ma matches pretty well i'm quite pleased with this so this is the background layer and i've done it with a solid black background there's the uh, various arcs and these are calculated from that green dot to give me the right angle. The second element is really simple, a white pointer, but it's on a transparent background so we can see through this area into the background. And the third bit is even simpler, a black circle as a mask and again a transparent area that we can see through. So they're the three elements I've had to draw. I've made them, I've resized them to 144 by 144 pixels. That's uh, one of the sort of uh, Stream Deck favoured uh, dimensions. It doesn't use too much memory space up and it rescales quite nicely onto the button. I drew it at actually double size to give me some precision and then resized it down. So let's have a look at how I actually construct this gauge. So if I bring up a close up of my Stream Deck software, you'll see that there's a blank button here next to my exhaust gas temperature gauge that we did in a previous video. So that's where I'm going to put my steam gauge. So you're seeing a close-up of the actual software. I'm not going to show what it looks like on the stream deck. Just trust that the camera is really quite fuzzy and doesn't show the details I want to, you to see. So here's my steam that's where my steam gauge is going to go and let's tighten it up as RPM so we know what we're dealing with. We'll deal with all the variables and mathematics in a bit. Let's get the graphics sorted out. So the first thing is to upload my background and that's my 144 pixel version of it so we'll drop that in there and when I press submit don't be surprised that nothing happens because it can't build the gauge until it's got the other compulsory element which is the turning bit, the pointer. So when we bring that in and submit it, graphics appear. So there we can see the pointer, there we can see the gauge, and we've got the RPM. Now I'm going to bring that down here onto the mask area in a bit. So we'll, let's get the mask in and then start to tidy up the layout. So the mask is just the black dot in the center. So when I press submit, you'll see that black on black isn't going to show, but it will cut off the bottom of the pointer. So if I press submit, keep your eye on that. And there it is. So there is a black hole there. So let's bring the RPM down to the middle. So 
we'll center that I'm using a font of about six points it just sits there quite nicely it's clearer on the button on the street actual stream deck than it is here but you can see it's there right now what we want is to bring the digital uh, version the number here we want to bring that down to here so let's go and get a variable so axes and O's will give us the variable and I usually do it by picking up the script editor and hunting for the variable and we know it's RPM that we're after and it's an aircraft engine and it's the prop RPM indexed and that'll be indexed to number one so one click to highlight it right hand click on the mouse copies it to the clipboard that can go that can go and we just want to drop that in we're going to actually going to use it twice once here to control where the pointer is and once here to put the text on the screen but let's just deal with this one to start with so index at number one we don't need to worry about the offset and the multiplier or anything here but we do want to look at the position of where it comes up so let's just see where it appears and there it is bang in the middle and perhaps a bit large as well so let's have a look at these values here well, the font size can probably go down to let's try 40 in a minute and it's this Y position here that's bang in the middle so let's bring it down to 130 so it should move down the uh, down the screen here so we'll submit that and see how that goes and I think I'll go with that remember this is going to go to four figures as we uh, push the, the RPM up so one thing you need to be careful is that you are affecting the text variable or the actual variable that controls the pointer but before I go any further what I need to do is to get this to zero properly so I'm not going to put the variable in here I don't want anything to start moving this around out of my control so this has got to move back 110 degrees so 90 will bring it to the 180 mark and it's 20 more on from there so 110 degrees so this is the turn offset in degrees and it works anti-clockwise so 110 degrees anti-clockwise from where it's pointing now should bring it to zero and it does so that's perfect we've got that sorted out so now let's talk about this variable here not this one this one and we do this index to number one and what we have to work out is this multiplier how many degrees or in fact how many radians this is why it gets complicated we have to think in radians how many radians around do we need to move for every one rpm raise so there's a bit of slightly heavy maths to do radians okay there are two pi radians two times pi radians in a circle we are so used to thinking of degrees 360 degrees this is how many radians there are in a circle two times pi 3.14 i'll go for six figure accuracy so that's how many radians there are in an entire circle 6.28 radians in a circle but we're not using the whole circle we're using 220 degrees so let's work out how much one degree would be so we divide that by 360 one degree is 0 0.0174 and a bit radians that's one degree but we're using 220 of them so we we'll multiply that by 220 and this is how many radians we're using to draw our gauge about 3.9 radians okay but we're going to move it in three thousandths because you're going up to here in three thousandths so for each rpm that we're going up that's what we need to calculate so we we'll divide this now by three thousand so that's how far we move for every single one rpm that's how many radians we need to move so 1.2 and that's so close to eight so we'll just put zero zero one two eight in here so it is that variables multiplier 
0 0.00128. Just double check that. So here's the chain of, co of calculations again. How many radians in a circle? How many radians for one degree? Yeah. Working way up. There's our chain. So eventually we divide it all by 3000. And that's the figure we end up with. Okay. Let's submit that. And there's it showing 360 RPM. What I'm going to do, let's bring this a bit closer and we'll put the gauges side by side. And you can see they their gauge only go it goes uh, to the nearest 10 and our mine goes uh, which actually shows each figure. But if I move my meter up the two arrows should move together. And if I get to the 2100 point, that's when it should enter the green sector. And it looks like it's doing the same on both gauges quite happily. And if I push it to its maximum, this is the maximum RPM I can get at sea level with this temperature. I can't get any higher than that. But I've tested it in flight and it does enter each sector accurately. So I'm really quite pleased with that gauge. And Apart from the bit of maths that's involved, it's not particularly difficult to get this sorted out. It's the conversion into radians that takes a bit of thinking, but it's uh, quite achievable. So next video, I will show you how I actually drew the background and the calculations involved in making that work. Again, shouldn't be too long a video, but uh, also it'd be quite nice to show that uh, GIMP is quite a useful piece of software for drawing gauges. So if you were into drawing gauges, we were worth having a look at it. It's a free piece of software and does quite a lot of nice things. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video then.